So, what do you do when life gives you a motor driver and some DC motors? Well, I decided to build this object avoiding car and today I'll be showing you how to build one too. Starting with the main parts I used, the first being the Mega Power Supply, which was sent over to me by EIM Technology to review. The Mega Power Supply is an adjustable DC power supply, and as a student, it has helped me completely power this project specifically and any other project where I need a power source. For the rest of the parts that you see on the screen include the motor driver that helped me control the direction and speed of the DC motors. And with the servo motors, I mounted the ultrasonic sensor on top of it, which helped me measure different distances at different directions. I'm using the Raspberry Pi Pico W as the brains of this robot car. And then finally, just the tires that I mounted on the chassis. And then for the tools that I use, I use a 3D printer to print the chassis, a solder iron to make connections, a hot glue gun to connect things to the chassis, and finally a breadboard and some jumper wires. And now that we've gathered all the parts we need, we are ready to move on to the next step, which is just putting it all together. All right, so first I had to get the DC motors ready by soldering the power and ground wires. It doesn't matter what terminal you connect to since you can just adjust it later when connecting to the motor driver. Then I was ready to hook everything up to the motor driver. I tested an algorithm that runs the motors to make sure the connections work. Then I added the ultrasonic sensor to take in data from the ultrasonic to stop the motors whenever the distance measured is small. Then I 3D printed the chassis and started moving all parts onto it. I ran the wires to the motor driver through the hole in the chassis. I then removed the rest of the components from the big breadboard. Once all connections are made, I tested them through the alligator clips that came with the Mego power supply since I didn't have my parts on a breadboard yet. Once I connected it to the motor driver's VCC and ground, I was able to see if Logic still works, which it did. Then I moved my wire connections to a small breadboard. This made it a lot easier to work with and the Mega Power Supply can easily connect on the breadboard for power now. After that, I glued on the rear swivel tire And then I added the servo motor. Here I screwed the back plate on the servo motor so the ultrasonic sensor will have a place to be hot glued on. I made all the connections necessary from the servo to the Raspberry Pi by running the jumper wires through. Then I tested the servo with an algorithm to turn in different directions to verify that all the connections work. And now I'm finally ready to program the logic so our car can avoid objects. For programming the robot, I decided to go with a modular design where each hardware component has a Python file. Besides main, there's the DC motors file, the servo motor, and the ultrasonic sensor. Inside each of these files is where the declaration and setup for each component takes place. This includes assigning pin numbers, setting the pin input and output modes, and defining functions for operation. So with that being said, I'll only be going over main.py as it's where the main logic happens. First, we import libraries from the files we made. For example, motor controller is the class in motor.py. After the imports are done, we initialize the components. And then we get into the scan directions function. This is where I get the servo motor to look straight and then measure the distance and save it to a straight distance variable. Then I repeat the process with left and right. And then for debugging purposes, I printed the measurement every single time the measurement was recorded. Now that we have the measurements for straight, right, and left, we simply compare it. This is where I put priority for always going straight. If straight is ever greater than 20 centimeters, then always go forward. 
Otherwise, if the left distance is greater than the right distance, we go left or else we go right. And then finally, in the main navigate loop, the robot starts by looking straight and constantly measures the forward distance. If the range is ever below the 20 centimeter threshold, it looks for the optimal direction using the function we just made and moves in that direction. After running the logic, I noticed that the robot was running a little weak. And then I realized that the motor driver's IC transistors have a voltage drop of around one to two volts. Since I'm running the entire project at around five volts, I can easily increase the input voltage to the motor driver to around six to seven volts, which is well within the safe limit. And luckily the Mego power supply can easily be adjusted from four to 24 volts DC. So with that being said, I put it in the corner of my bedroom with some obstacles over here to see how it should avoid them correctly. So I'm going to face it this way to start off and it should go straight and then we'll see how it's going to fare with this uh, little course. As you see that priority for going straight. And the boot stops at it perfectly. And that is really it for the project. I am planning, since it's a Raspberry Pico W, on adding the ability to connect the car through your phone so you'd have an option between connecting it through Wi-Fi on your phone or having it autonomously drive. And I'd like to give a special shout out for Mego for Power Supply, which is powering the entire project. They didn't sponsor this video, but they did send me one of their great products for free for me to test and tell everyone about. So I definitely recommend it. Links for it are in the description. And yeah, more projects like this are coming soon. Maybe even some additions to this or you can control it with your phone. But for now, that's it. Thank you for watching.